I love being outdoors with beautiful colors everywhere. On my days off, I try to enjoy the simple pleasures in life, like nature and painting. Colors have always been special for me. In painting, I use my eyes to gauge colors, which is fine for oils. But you know, we all see colors a bit differently. Some might see this as red, some more as an orange. Orange. How about a little more on the right? Can we get that? During the week, I work with color in a different way. As a video graphics artist, TV production demands a certain precision when it comes to color and conceptual interpretation. And a vital part of any production is high technical quality. This includes correct color reproduction, which doesn't compromise artistic license. The key to maintaining this color quality is to carefully monitor a picture signal before it's recorded or transmitted. This is done by using a well-defined test signal with known characteristics, such as color bars. Since we know what the test signal should look like, we can easily see if it has been changed by distortions or impairments. If the test signal goes through the system without distortion, we know our signals will also pass through clean and undistorted. The three most essential pieces of test equipment for video are the waveform monitor, vector scope, and the test signal generator. Using a Tektronix waveform monitor, let's quickly review how the waveform monitor works, then we'll move on to the vector scope. The waveform monitor graticule is arranged so the vertical IRE markings show amplitude, which is used for level setting and monitoring. IRE stands for Institute of Radio Engineers, who devised this system of measurement. The horizontal markings are used for timing measurements. Remember, a TV picture is made up of 525 lines, which are split into two fields. Each of the horizontal lines scans one field, left to right, from top to bottom. Upon completion, the beam returns to the top and scans the next field. This occurs 30 times a second. Every line has a negative going synchronizing pulse called the sync pulse. Here's how the sync pulse looks on the waveform monitor. On the vector scope, it is simply seen as a dot in the center of the screen. And on the picture monitor, it's this black bar, which would normally be off to the left of the screen out of the viewer's sight. This sync pulse sends the beam back to start another line and is contained in the signal's horizontal blanking interval, which is the short period of time between the scan lines. So the serrated horizontal line is the scale which shows you where the picture beam is at any incident in time, while the vertical markings measure the amplitude of the signal. Let's take a closer look at the waveform by using a color bar test signal. Each bar represents luminance voltages. The bars are arranged by luminance levels from highest on the left to lowest on the right. Each bar also represents a color, white, yellow, cyan, green, magenta, red, blue, and black. Waveform monitors are particularly useful for setting proper video levels. Start by making sure the blanking level is at zero IRE. Then, check to see if the 100% white reference level lines up to the 100 IRE graticule line. The black level should be 7.5 IRE. The waveform monitor allows us to observe luminance levels, much like a light meter for a photographer. If the picture is too bright or hot, the monitor would look like this. If the picture is too dark, it would look like this. Again, adjusting the levels to fall within the 100 IRE and 7 and 1 half IRE would take place at the video source. Here's how a black and white picture would look on the vector scope. It looks this way because vector scopes are used to measure the chrominance or color portion of the signal. The way this color information was added to the black and white signal was by using a sine wave. This contains the color burst reference, which is off screen right after the sync pulse. The sine wave, during active picture, has different phase angles and amplitudes to get different colors. 
The vector scope decodes this portion of the signal to provide us color information. It's important to remember vector scope controls, like all monitoring equipment controls, do not in any way affect the video signal itself. It's a bit like painting. When I dab paint on the canvas, the paint already on the brush is similar to the signal. If the paint has a lot of yellow, I can't change the color unless I go back to the palette, which would be like going back to the original source signal. Now, let's take a look at some basic vector scope functions. The vector scope Graticule was designed to be used primarily with color bars, so we'll use this signal, which has known parameters, and take a look at the display. Reading the display is fairly simple. Each box represents a color of the color bar signal. They represent primary colors, red, green, blue, and secondary colors, cyan, yellow, and magenta. The graticule is the scale used to quantify the parameters of the signal under examination. And the trace represents the color portion of the video signal. Some vector scopes, like the Tektronix 1720, have these two boxes, which are used for two-channel audio measurements. But for now, let's review the basic controls which can be found on most vector scopes. Input controls typically consist of input channel, reference, and mode selection. The gain variable knob is used to expand the trace during precision measurements. It also comes in handy during white balancing, which we'll perform later. All the display controls are self-explanatory. Focus, scale illumination, and intensity. The phase knob adjustment is critical when setting up a vector scope. The color burst vector must be aligned in the 9 o'clock position with the Graticule's horizontal axis. Here's the black and white photo we looked at earlier. Remember how it looked on the vector scope? Now we'll bring in color to illustrate how it affects the vector scope as well as the waveform. Here's what another shot would look like on the screen and on the vector scope, ending up all red. If a shot were another color, say blue, the scope would look like this. If the shot were green, like this. Remember, each dot corresponds to a color, so full spectrum pictures look something like this. Now that you have a basic understanding of how the vector scope works with color, let's see how we can use the vector scope in the studio. One of the most fundamental and critical operations in a studio is system timing. Whenever you combine one source of video with another, each source must be timed together, such as cameras using camera control units, or time-based correctors for VTRs. If your system is not properly timed, you will get horizontal jumps or color shifts. Here are the basic components for a synchronous system, which is also called a Genlock Studio. A camera, a couple of VTRs with time-based correctors, a switcher, waveform monitor, vector scope, test signal generator, and a master sync generator. The master sync generator is used to create black burst outputs, which are needed to synchronize all the components of the system. The reference signal is the timekeeper, much like a master clock is for a school system. All the other clocks are locked to the master clock. So when time is changed on the master clock, all other clocks change simultaneously. It keeps the clocks in sync. A similar kind of adjustment is done in the video studio. In the studio, the process involves setting the output of each piece of gear in the system so that horizontal sync pulses and burst phase line up with the reference signal. This information is found off to the side of the image. 